tonight. Brace yourself for Blizzard 2015. Google gives in to a gag order. And is a la carte television finally here? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 261 for Monday, January 26th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever using their redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. With integrations from Getty Images, Google Apps, new templates, cover pages, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Winter storm Juno is hammering the East Coast tonight. And we on the warmer coast know this because we've been watching the live feed from the roof of Mashable headquarters in New York City. It looks bad out there. Stay inside, East Coasters. Watch more Twit. 9 to 5 Google just alerted us that Google released one of their signature crisis maps to consolidate all the latest geo info, info on the blizzard to help with your emergency preparations. And the New York Times is reporting that people should stay off the roads if at all possible. And if you're planning on using ride sharing companies like Uber or Lyft, know that both companies used demand based pricing, also known as surge pricing, also known as price gouging, to increase fares when there aren't enough cars on the road. Today, both companies managed to eke out a little blizzard PR. Uber announced that they won't charge more than 2.8 times the normal rates, and Lyft will charge no more than three times their normal rates. WikiLeaks wants Google to explain itself. In a letter to Google chairman Eric Schmidt, WikiLeaks claims that Google gave the FBI emails, personal data, and identifying internet metadata on three WikiLeaks staffers in 2012. In addition, the letter says that Google didn't inform the organization until last month. The FBI had demanded the data in a warrant and slapped Google with a gag order, but WikiLeaks says Google could have contested it as Twitter did in a similar situation. The letter also demanded a complete list of everything Google provided to the FBI. Microsoft released their quarterly earnings report today, and Apple is reported to release theirs tomorrow. Ahead of tomorrow's Apple's earning call, many analysts reported today that the company is planning to announce that for the first time ever, they sold more iPhones in China than they sold in the U.S. in the final three months of 2014. The release of the iPhone 6, combined with Apple's partnership with China Mobile, the world's largest mobile carrier, led to the record sales growth. Tomorrow, Sling TV will start offering early adopters a $20 a month, no commitment, cancel anytime streaming service that promises to let you watch what you want to watch, sort of. Harry McCracken, technology editor at Fast Company and frequent Twit guest, wrote a review of Sling, and we've asked him to join us today to talk about the service. Hi, Harry. Hey, it's great to be here. So for $20 a month, what do you get? You get a dozen stations. Uh, they're all pretty high-profile ones. The two key ones for a lot of people or ESPN and ESPN2, but you also get TNT and TBS and Disney and HGTV and the Food Network and several others. So you got to try it. Uh, well, what do you think of it? Well, it's potentially a big step forward. Um, these are all channels which today you get either from cable or from a satellite provider such as Dish, which is behind Sling TV. And with this, it's, it's purely internet-based. You can watch it on your iPhone or your iPad or your Android device or your Roku or your Fire TV. And you're not paying for like 100 channels and paying $90 a month. It's not truly a la carte because you are paying for a dozen channels. But it feels like it's a lot closer to the mean, lean, net-savvy service a lot of people have been craving. So do you think this will replace the service that people already have? Like, would this replace a Netflix or... I mean, or is it just basically to replace basic cable? And I mean, what it's really appealing to people who like live sports, which so far has been one of the hardest things to get over the internet. This has ESPN and ESPN2, and there's also sports on TBS and TNT. Um, Sling says that they're catering to millennials who never had cable in the first place. The actual lineup of channels feels a little bit like it might skew a little bit older because it has stuff like HGTV and a bunch of stuff for little kids. And I think there will be some people who want to cut the cord for whom this will be interesting, as long as the dozen channels it has are the ones 
that someone is looking for. So, so that's a good question. I mean, why do you think they chose these channels? I mean, HGTV and channels for kids. I mean, that sounds like people with houses and people with kids, not millennials. Why did they choose these channels? Well, the companies that own the big cable channels have been pretty careful and worried about going online at all because they kind of like the, the business model they have now where people pay quite a bit a month for cable TV. So I, I think the odds are pretty good that these are the, the ones that were willing to take a leap and try Sling TV. Not, not potentially the ideal lineup for everybody. And, and Dish says they are planning to add more channels over time, and I hope they do. So the $20 a month, does that mean I still have to watch commercials? Uh, you, you got some commercials. When I watched ESPN before it launched, I got like a blank screen with the ESPN logo saying, we'll be right back, which was kind of strange. And it would sit there and stare at that for several minutes. <laughs> but Hoping for, for a commercial. But generally speaking, you're getting the same thing you'd get if you if you're watching this on Comcast or or Dish or DirecTV or whatever. So they're streaming the same commercials. They're not target. Are they targeting me? And the, they know where I am, presumably, or is it the same commercials everybody? For the most part, it's, I, I saw a lot of house ads. Like when I watched Disney, I saw a lot of ads for other Disney things. So I'm not sure if they're getting ads that are targeting Sling TV specifically yet. And another interesting thing is that uh, some stations you can go in reverse for up to three days to watch what was on in the past. Uh -huh. um, with ESPN, though, you can't even press pause. So it, it's truly live TV, and there's no DVR functionality. Uh, so did you use that Go Back Three Days feature? Did it, did it work? Was I tried it, it. It was on channels such as HGTV, where I wasn't all that interested anyway in mm -hmm. what, what they were showing. Uh, for, for something like sports, it would be really cool, though, but that functionality is not available yet, although Dish says they will add more video on demand type features, and they do have some movies right now as well. So is this the same thing as Sling, Sling Box that came out a few years ago? Is it? It's a little weird because Sling Box has been around a lot for a long time, and, and it, it lets you transmit the cable you're paying for over the internet. And it's owned by Echo Star, which is a company that's closely affiliated with Dish. But Sling TV has nothing to do with Sling Box at all, and my guess is there will be some confusion with that. And, and even on the initial press release about Sling TV, they went to some pains to say it's, it's not the same. Uh, They've run out of names, apparently. Yeah. So so if I want this, when can I sign up? How can I sign up? Well, they have, they're starting to let in people tomorrow who signed up. And uh, they say within the next two weeks, you'll just be able to sign up. And there's a one-week trial period. So it actually should be pretty straightforward to give it a try and see what you think of it. All right. Well, now, do you recommend it right now for people? Or would you suggest people wait? I think it's... Potentially a lot more important just as, because it might be the start of something big where we finally start to see more of these channels available online. For now, it kind of all comes down to, to the 12 channels they're offering. If they appeal to you and you feel like it's worth 20 bucks a month, uh, it might be pretty appealing. And for the rest of us, it's something more that we should keep our eye on and see, see where it goes and which channels they add over time. Right. So people who can't cut the cord unless they have their sports, that would be good for them, maybe. Right. But I think there are some folks who are so into ESPN's sports coverage that 20 bucks a month might make sense. Yeah. And we don't have cable at home. And my husband watches sports, but he just goes over to my parents' house. And that's apparently still legal to do now. But when it becomes not legal, then maybe we'll get this. It might save him the drive. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much, Harry. Thanks for joining us. What, what next? What's your next big story you're working on? I am... Uh, working on a bunch of stories I can't talk about yet, but mm. keep, keep an eye on fastcompany.com and I'll see them. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Harry. Thank you. That was Harry McCracken from the Technologizer and Fast Company. Coming up, Comcast gives us more reasons to dislike them, and I demand to know who's flying a drone at 3 a.m. on the White House lawn. But first, this episode is brought to you by squarespace.com. Squarespace recently launched the completely redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. Now it's even easier to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Here's why you'll love Squarespace. Live editing on one screen, making changes easier with no more toggling to the preview mode. Squarespace has 14 new designs, giving you over 30 to choose from. So go ahead, browse through the templates because they're beautiful and professional, and there's one that will fit whatever kind of website you're trying to build, whether you're a musician an artist, an architect, if you want a site for your restaurant, your wedding, or really any kind of e-commerce site. Cover Pages is new with Squarespace 7. Choose from 10 new templates, perfect for creating quick landing pages for your brand or personal identity. Squarespace 7 also includes Getty Images. So for just $10 each, you can pick from thousands of professional Getty Images and use them on your site. 
Social media is built in. Link your site to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Tumblr, YouTube, Pinterest, and more. And don't forget to, forget to use their mobile apps. With the portfolio, note, metric, and blog mobile apps, you can make changes from just about anywhere. It's incredibly easy to use, and if you want some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24-7. It's also inexpensive. It starts at just $8 a month, and Squarespace takes care of hosting so you don't have to. Plus, you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website today. When you sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use offer code TECHNIGHT to get 10% off. We thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. And now on to a few more stories we're following today. If you've used the Waze navigation app, you know it lets you know where the location of police cars, presumably so you can slow down if you're speeding. Now some law enforcement officials want Waze parent company Google to disable this feature. They feel it's putting officers in danger, and some have even called the app a police stalker. In a letter to Google's chief executive last month, Los Angeles police, police chief Char Charlie Beck said that Waze could be misused by those with criminal intent to endanger police officers and the community. In a statement, Waze spokeswoman Julie Mossler said the company shares information with police around the world. Mossler says these relationships keep citizens safe, promote faster emergency response, and help alleviate traffic congestion. Comcast is thrilled by what they're calling an outpouring of thoughtful and positive comments in support of the company's giant merger with Time Warner Cable, just as the deal is reaching the final stages of federal review. For example, the mayor of Roswell, Georgia, sent a letter to the FCC saying not only that the community supports the merger, but the town res residents are happy with the service provided by Comcast every day. Now, anyone who's ever used Comcast will tell you that that sounds a little fishy. And since nearly identical letters were sent by local mayors, council members, state officials, and others, reporters from The Verge decided to investigate. What they found was that the letters praising Comcast were written by Comcast's PR people. You can read the rest of the amusing investigative report on TheVerge.com. Facebook is rolling out another app. This time it's a slimmed down version called Facebook Lite. This release is exclusive to Android and during this testing phase is only available in Bangladesh, Nepal, Nigeria, South Africa, Sudan, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, and Zimbabwe. The app works with Android 2.2 and is 252 kilobytes in size, is designed for 2G networks, and for areas with limited connectivity. Facebook is hoping to give users in emerging markets a better experience regardless of the device or connection. And finally, early this morning, a DJI Phantom drone crashed into the grounds of the White House. No one was hurt. The drone was unarmed and didn't even have a camera on it. So the only thing that appears to have been damaged was the $700 quadcopter itself, which the White House announced was owned by a government employee who was flying the drone for recreational purposes at three in the morning. And we just want to know why. In the wake of this amusing non-disaster, Recode reported six other notable drone visits to the White House with top secret photos. You can check a link to those photos. Here's a couple of them here. Uh, Lincoln, I get you didn't know there were drones back then. He looks a little bit worried. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2, where you can also see the rest of those drone pictures. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. And if you're on the East Coast, stay safe and warm. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.